In today's video, we're going to tie a crab fly called the Flexo Crab. Now, this is actually a very frustrating fly to tie. Uh, it takes quite a bit of practice and a pretty good amount of patience. The first thing we're going to do is start with a Gamagatsu SS15. It's just a straight shank standard saltwater hook. And we're going to start with some 6 aught Vivas thread. You can also use Kevlar thread for this fly. Um, I suggest if you just are starting to tie these and you haven't tied them before, to probably start with as heavy of a thread as you can get away with just to practice on and kind of get used to the amount of tension that you can put on this material uh, and how hard you can pull. I'm going to use 6 aught. We'll roll the dice here and give it a shot. First thing we're going to do is start with a pair of large lead eyes right in the middle of the shank of the hook. And this fly is usually tied on a rather large hook for permit and things like that. So we're going to tie it today on a 1-aught. You can also tie it on a 2-aught. I've even seen guys tie it on a 3-aught for big permit. So it all kind of depends on the size of the crab that you're going to tie. The crab that we're going to tie today is probably about the size of a quarter, maybe a little bit bigger. If you take into account the legs and claws, it's probably more like a silver dollar or bigger. So I just secure those lead eyes to the shank of the hook. Then I'm going to take my thread and just work my way back here to where the hook shank starts to bend. Now the thread doesn't have to be pretty here. You're not going to see it. It's all going to be covered up by our body material. I'm going to take a piece of Fly Flex. And this size is 3 8 It's fairly large, uh, mainly because I want it to get that kind of crab shape. Uh, so this is a good size for, say, a 2 aught hook. Uh, if you want to tie smaller, you definitely want to get like 1 quarter inch or even 1 eighth inch fly flex. Um, there's also stuff called uh, easy body tubing, similar. Um, I don't know if it comes in kind of sand colors. might just come in pearl um, or white. White's actually a good color to use because then you can color it with markers. We're going to use like a sand color here looks like kind of a sand crab color or tan crab color. And we're going to take our thread and I'm just going to take that tubing and I just cut it. It's about an inch and a half, two inch length. I'm going to put it over the entire shank of the hook back to where my thread is. And I'm going to take that thread and I'm just going to do a nice loose wrap all the way around all that fly flex braid. Then I'm going to tighten down for my second and third wrap very carefully though. I really don't want to pull too hard on this material. Now I need to secure it. Now it's real hard to whip finish over all this tubing. So I'm just going to take some super glue and I'm going to put it right on the thread wraps there. And then I'm going to take my thread and wrap it onto that super glue just a couple of times and pull it tight and just hold it there for a sec and basically that super glue is going to cure right onto our thread. Then you can trim your thread and if a little bit of it comes unraveled you basically can just find the point where the super glue took and trim it right there. Now this is just temporary um, don't think that that is going to be my finished piece. This is literally just to lash it to the hook um, and create kind of the start of my body. Now I'm going to take a lighter. You can also use a cauterizing tool. And I'm just going to get in here and kind of melt some of those pieces of the fly flex. I try to melt them kind of right up into my thread as close as I can without hitting my thread. I'll use a cauterizing tool here so you can see that. This basically heats up the very tips. You gotta be real careful not to damage the tips on this though, but this works real good for kind of the underside and kind of the areas on the fly that you can't reach. And This just helps clean it up. You can use scissors. Um, if you can clean it up and make it look nice with scissors, go for it. Um, but you're better than I am because I am usually not able to clean it up very much um, with the scissors. 
Then we're going to simply take this, you can position it on the hook wherever you need it. You can see I can barely slide it around wherever I want it. Um, so when we do the front half of the hook, you can either do this before or after. When we do the front half of the hook, you're going to see if I push to flex that, that, that body point will slide. So what I generally like to do is now lash it into its final resting place. I like it to be just kind of right where the bend starts to starts to curve. And then I just get in here with my thread and I'm going to real tightly lay down some thread wraps. And you want to make sure that they're tight enough where when I push on this, the back point of that hook does not move. And then you can use your little super glue trick again if you want. Or you can whip finish with your fingers if you're able to, to do that. Super glue trick is pretty quick and easy. And we're going to coat all this with some fly finish at the end. So if this uh, thread comes slightly unraveled, it's not the end of the world. But now you can see I can push on that body without that point moving. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create the body. Now you can see as I push on this stuff, it likes to flex. That's kind of why it's called a flexo crab. So I'm going to take this material, I'm going to pinch it and push it till I like the desired shape of my crab. I'm going to get my thread out. I'm going to lay the thread right on top of the tubing and I'm going to grasp it with my thumb and the tubing at the same time. What that's going to do is just create kind of a tie-in point for me here to just grab this tubing. If I can get it to quit slipping. This is fairly slippery stuff so it takes a little bit of getting used to. This is probably the hardest part of the fly right here is just simply capturing that fly flex tubing. Let's see if I can get it. Now once I have the tubing captured, what I like to do is pull on the wide part of the crab. Basically pull it sideways. What that's going to do is put more flex into the sides of the crab where I want to get kind of the bulk of the body formed. I don't want it to flex vertically so I'll just kind of pull on it in the area where I want to create shape, which is, of course, width-wise. Now, this is going to be a little bit ugly to start with, but I basically just need to lash it down and basically capture the material. That's all I'm really looking to do at this point. So I just can whip finish. You can also use your super glue trick. Now I'm going to come in here with my scissors and trim out carefully some of this braid. Now you want to be careful that you do not get too close to the thread. If you get too close then this fly flex will just kind of pop off and you'll be done and you'll have to start over. So once I cut about a sixteenth of an inch away from my thread, I'm just going to get in here with my, my lighter and just burn some of those ends. And you can come in here also with a cauterizing tool. I really like this tool. It really can get in there nice and close. It really just melts this fly flex just by touching it. 
you don't want to sweep through too hard with that tip or else you'll damage it. So you just want to kind of come in and melt all that. Just like that. Now we can come in here and kind of flatten out our body. And I'm going to sneak my thread up to the eye, just kind of how we did at the back half of the body. So I'm just going to come in here, sneak in, right behind the eye. You can manipulate some of that just by pulling on it. There is my crab body. Now the next step is to start to build the body. Now this fly will ride, or not build the body, build the, the crab part. This fly will ride with the hook up just like this in the water. So I want to thread all the legs and claws onto the bottom of that fly, which is actually the top of the hook, because it'll be riding upside down. Now, your best friend is going to be a threader. These are just threaders from Griffin. It's nothing fancy, just a wire threader. Now I'm going to thread through one side and out the other, basically where I want my legs and claws to be. So I just thread it through, then I take a piece of velvet chenille or ultra chenille in kind of a matching color, kind of a tan color, I'm going to cut out a little length of it. I'm just going to thread it through the threader and the body and just let it sit there for now. Now I'm going to do three sets of legs and a set of claws. So we'll just do the legs real quick. I like to do kind of two on the back half of the fly, one on the front, and then my set of claws on the front. You, but you can do it however you like. So I basically just take my threader, find the area where I want to go through, and I sometimes get kind of picky where I want it to come out, so you just manipulate the, the threader with your fingers. Here we go. Drop your leg in, pull it through. And we'll do the same thing here. I think the lead eyes are blocking me. There we go. You can buy these threaders in a three pack, so if you kind of ruin one on accident by kind of learning how to do this, it's not the end of the world. Now, the next thing to do are the claws. So I'm going to take a piece of chenille, I'm going to double it over so that there's two pieces. I'm going to tie an overhand knot into the piece with the loop there. I want to leave that about half an inch or so. I'm going to tie another knot just below the first knot that I tied, about a half an inch. However long basically you want your claws to stick out the front of the fly. I'm going to trim those at the second knot and that's what you'll end up with. Now I'm going to come back kind of at the back of the body, then I'm going to take it right out to the front where I want the claws to come out. Now you have to leave some room for your eyes. So you want to make sure that you don't crowd the front section of your crab with the claws. You want to leave a little room for the eyes. So I just pull the first knot through, and then I can just loosen up on my threader and pull the knot out of the wire, then it will just hang out the front just like that. Now I do that a second time. I 
another piece of chenille. I'm short a little piece. So let's get another one here. And again, I take the chenille, double it over, tie it overhand knot with the loop, do a second overhand knot, about a half an inch or so, below that first one, trim it, and we're ready to insert our claw. And again, don't crowd the front of the fly. So I'm just going to try to sneak in here, try to give you a better view. There we go. Pull the claw down into the body. And there are my claws for now. Now we're ready to make the eyes. You can just make your own or you can buy them from EP or other companies. We're going to trim them so that there's just a little nub sticking out of the eye. And then I just slide that into the body. And I do the same on the other side. Now, you can either epoxy these or use a little bit of UV fly finish. It's up to you. Epoxy is pretty durable stuff, but it takes some time to cure. So for that, we're just going to use a little bit of fly finish, just for time's sake. It's not quite as durable as epoxy, but I don't want to have you guys sit here and watch epoxy cure on the video. You can also super glue these. Sometimes I'll kind of pre super glue them just to kind of hold them in place, and then I'll coat them with a little bit more epoxy or fly finish. And I usually kind of go all around the base of the eye that is touching the fly flex. There we are. Okay, now we need to secure, actually this leg right here, you can see how he's kind of poking out the top right here. Nice thing is we haven't secured anything, so I can just pull him out. Let's redo that leg. He was bothering me a little bit. It's probably not the biggest deal. Fish may not even notice, but sometimes those little things can make the difference between a permit eating and a non-permit eating so there we go now we're ready to secure the legs so I'm going to take some super glue I'm going to go around each leg and where it connects to the fly flex I'm going to put a little dollop of super glue on it right where it connects Okay, once I have that, we're ready to secure the super glue. So all I'm going to do is, I'm, I didn't put any super glue in the middle, so I'm just going to take it and squeeze it in the middle. And what that's going to do, it's going to flex all those fibers and kind of make them grab onto those legs. And the super glue will basically cure on the fly flex and the legs. And it takes a few seconds. Depending on the type of super glue we're using, I think this stuff technically takes 20 seconds or so. I usually always rush it, like I'm sure all you guys do. But you just basically squeeze until that super glue cures, and then your leg is secured. Now, if you're going to fish this fly and you want to make it ultra durable, you can then go through and epoxy each of those points just to make it even more durable. But 
but essentially they're good enough for me to work this fly on video here. So we're going to now take our scissors and trim our claws. So I basically just cut the loop and I have these two little claws now that I can kind of splay apart. I'll do the same on the other one here and splay them apart. Then I'll trim my leg lengths here. I usually like the back legs to be the shortest. If you've ever seen a crab, those little back legs are just little stumpy guys. So I trim those. Usually these are kind of a little longer, and then these guys are usually kind of the next longest. But like I said, you can trim it however you want and however you like the looks. There we are. I'm going to take my lighter. I'm just going to quickly taper all the ends. And do the same to the claws. Now we're ready to finish up the, the head and the butt. I like to put a big piece or big dollop of uh, epoxy on the head and the butt. For the video's sake here, we're just going to use some fly finish. It's quick, coats the whole thing, it's nice and hard. So we'll just use this for the video. Like I said, if you're going to fish it and you want something ultra durable, epoxy is probably your better option. There's a little piece of thread hanging off there. But like I said, if that super glue kind of comes off when you're working the fly, it's not the end of the world because at this point we're just going to cake some epoxy or fly finish on there. This fly is more crafting probably than tying. And like I said, it's actually a lot more frustrating than it looks. So be patient. Do four or five practice flies before you think you're going to get a perfect one. You can also use some marker too to mark up. You can see I just use kind of some white thread. And if that bothers you, you can take a brown marker or a tan marker and just uh, cover up all that stuff. At this point, we can, we're pretty much finished. You have your crab here. Looks an awful lot like a crab, even feels like a crab. A lot of guys say that's why permit to uh, eat this fly so well, because they munch on it and it feels just like a hard crab. So you're pretty much done. You can leave it as is, or you can come in here and do some custom touches. You can put in a few bar marks which I usually like to do. It just adds a little bit of kind of variation. Most crabs, you see them, they're not all one color, unless it's like a sand crab. So a little bit of color doesn't always hurt. I just use a brown marker and just kind of put a little bar mark in each leg. You can also color up the claws too. A lot of guys put red claws on their crabs, which I admit looks awful fishy, so we can do that too. I simply just take a post-it note and just hold it up to your claw and then just rub your marker on it. That way you don't get it all over your hands. And you could do the same here on each of them. There we go. And that is essentially a finished flexo crab. Great little crab pattern. Looks pretty close to the real thing. Not a whole lot of movement to it. The legs, of course, will kind of 
move and flex and flutter as you strip it back. But great little crab pattern.